lineup for today on the now legal sports betting is spreading across the country with Indiana starting it this weekend. And we're looking into what comes next. High school football coaches are changing the game, making safety a priority. We're looking at what else is changing with concerns about concussions getting louder. And mushrooms are the latest trendy ingredient being added to everything from coffee to workout supplements. But will they actually boost your health? We're getting answers on that. Thank you, Annie. Welcome into the Now Indy. I'm on RTV6. I'm Amanda Starantino. Hurricane Dorian has strengthened to a Category 3 storm as it takes aim at the east coast of Florida. It could hit that state late this weekend or early next week, possibly as a Category 4 storm. That's why the Indiana Red Cross is preparing to send crews down to Florida. The Red Cross tells us they trained and equipped hundreds of volunteers over the course of this year in order to respond to incidents and storms like Hurricane Dorian. In fact, there are already two Indiana Red Cross members in place in Florida, but there could soon be more. We have volunteers with a, a range of positions and skills, damage assessment professionals, uh, people that use geo, geospatial information technology, sometimes even drone operators, running shelters, feeding. And uh, as uh, requirements come in from what we call the job uh, down in Florida, uh, those come into our computer system and we begin to match them with volunteer skill sets here in Indiana. We get them a plane ticket, get them on the, get them on the road. And the Red Cross needs your help tonight. The Red Cross needs volunteers. They won't send you to Florida, but they say you can help right here in central Indiana. There are often fires that displace people and other incidents where you can help those in need. You can build your skills locally and eventually you will be ready for the Red Cross to deploy you somewhere to help in a disaster situation. You can also make donations to the Red Cross by calling 1-800-RED-CROSS or text DORIAN to 90999. And today, Duke Energy trucks packed up and started their journey down to Florida. They will be ready to respond to the inevitable power outages from Hurricane Dorian. Pretty amazing. You see those caravans sometimes when you're traveling, uh, just wind events or other severe weather events. You see those uh, power companies mobilize and help out other communities. Pretty cool. Showers and some isolated thunderstorms. And I mean isolated. I don't think it'll be a widespread thing tonight. Let's dip to the south first. Fading area of rain south of Nashville, northwest of Brownstown. A little bit just to the northeast of Bedford in this fading area of what was heavier rain south of Seymour. Then we head into Decatur County. This just flared up and that's the way it'll go. These will pop up and then collapse probably in a 40 minute cycle just west of Greensburg sliding to the east. Just to show you the rest of central Indiana, you can pick out where you live and what's not around you. The biggest cluster of thunderstorms is around Cincinnati. Temperatures with the veil of cloud cover around 80 degrees in Indy, 79 in Muncie, cooler in Lafayette at 77 for the evening hours. That isolated threat for a thunder shower south of Interstate 70, clouds everywhere, 69 by 10 o'clock tonight. There are long lines as people stock up on gas ahead of Hurricane Dorian, and shortages are already happening. Gas Bunny studied how fast areas ran out of fuel and stocked up again during recent major storms. Panama City during Hurricane Michael, Wilmington, North Carolina during Hurricane Florence, and Hurricane Irma in Gainesville, Florida. Now, during Irma and Florence, there were similar trends. The number of gas stations without gas started to drop usually no more than three days after landfall. Gas shortages continued continued much longer after Hurricane Michael and most likely because of the severe damage in that area at the time. But what's probably the most notable trend is once an emergency was declared for these storms, that's when the gas shortages start. And that's why people traveling to hurricane prone areas and people that live there should stay fueled up throughout the season. The Gas Buddy app also lets you report and see fuel outages and availability. Well, Facebook is one place people go looking for information during major events like storms. And this week, Facebook said it's opening up its alert tools to local governments. That'll allow officials and first responders to send out specially marked local alerts that can reach more people in those areas. Facebook has been testing this in some places. More than 30 cities and counties in Florida are signed up ahead of Hurricane Dorian. You know, we're constantly using social media, uh, all different aspects of social media, all different ways of communication. Uh, During testing, Facebook found that of the people who saw the local alerts, more than two thirds said the information was new to them. A little less than half took action based on the information they saw from those. Well, starting the now news feed, Miami says companies must remove their scooters ahead of Hurricane Dorian. The city is concerned the scooters could be sent flying, leading to even more damage. Well, the companies say they will comply. Ford 
is recalling more than 550,000 vehicles. The recall covers 2018 to 2020 F-150 trucks, 2019 and 2020 Super Duty trucks, 2018 and 2019 Explorers, and 2019 and 2020 Expeditions. The seatbacks may not properly restrain people in a crash. Well, United now says it won't fly the Boeing 737 MAX until at least December 19th. Last month, Southwest said it wouldn't put the plane back in action until 2020. Boeing plans to unveil a software fix next month. Well, back to our lineup. Legalized sports betting is big money, and it's expanding across the country now, with Indiana adding it this weekend. So where it could be coming next. Let Wickerworks design the best backyard style for you. As we head into college football and NFL season, fans across the country will now be able to do something for the first time, legally bet on games. Indiana is the latest state making it a reality on Sunday. Corey Rangel has a look at the growing number of places starting to allow legal sports betting. Yep. Lou's Sports Bar in D.C. is getting ready for a busy weekend as football season gets underway. Manager Mark Hellowell is working on a new way to bring in more customers, legal sports betting. We're trying to do everything we can to create interest. If we can turn this place into a little Caesars Palace on Saturdays and Sundays so people don't have to go to Vegas. He applied for a license that will allow customers to bet on games inside his bar and just posted the permit. Put it up last night and have has to stay up for 30 days before our hearing. Our hearing's on October. Legalized sports betting is quickly moving across the country. In addition to D.C., these other states either already have sports betting or it will become legal when new laws take effect over the next several months. Right now, there are only eight states that haven't either legalized uh, sports gambling or don't have a bill to legalize sports gambling. George Calhoun is one of the attorneys who helped convince the U.S. Supreme court last year to allow states other than Nevada to legalize sports betting, which he says will help protect gamblers. They know they're doing something that's legal. They're going to get the protection of if they have a problem, uh, they're going to have access to the courts and to, the, and to law enforcement. Um, and they're going to have uh, certainty that if they, if they win a, a bet, they're going to get paid. According to the American Gaming Association, in the states that now allow sports betting, gamblers have wagered more than $10 billion since it became legal. In Washington, D.C., I'm Corey Rangel reporting. Has everybody got the warning? Yes, coach. Does everybody still want to play football? Yes, yes coach. Let's go. It's time to play football. Let's go. High school football coaches are now making sure their players understand the risks before they even start practice. Ahead in our lineup, we're looking at what else is changing with concerns about concussions getting louder. Working for you. for Australia's Great Barrier Reef. The agency overseeing it says the outlook has been downgraded. They lowered expectations from poor to very poor. They attributed to the warming waters. Well, cities and counties across Nevada are preparing for the big Storm Area 51 event next month. A second County has signed an emergency declaration to free up more resources. Millions are signed up on Facebook to attend the September 20th event. Well, you may have heard about all the craze surrounding Popeye's chicken sandwich this week. And now the company is facing a lawsuit because they sold out of them. A Tennessee man says that he made that that, that made the offer essentially false advertising because he drove to several locations and struck out at each one of them. Well, don't drink and scoot. That's the new warning published in trauma surgery and acute care open. Health experts tested about 100 patients who had been hurt on an e-scooter for alcohol. Now, nearly half of those patients had a blood alcohol level higher than 0.08. That's the legal limit for drivers in most states. And some patients were also tested for drugs. More than half of that group tested positive. Well, it's Friday night and lots of high school football games are happening across the country. The game is changing amid safety concerns though, especially with head trauma. Run through the tackle. Are you going to hurt this man? No. no. He's going to be perfectly safe. 
The Associated Press surveyed high school athletic associations in every state. Now they found that a majority of states have rules on how often teams can have full contact practices. Some get as specific as the amount of time or days players can hit each other full speed. Other areas leave it up to the coaches who say they are more focused on player safety now. We want them to play. We want them to be healthy too. So that old days of uh, you know beating them into the ground and running till you vomit and all the the old sort of your tough stuff that's gone from the game. It's forcing us as coaches to think about it and think about how we organize our practice, how we you know run practices, and, and paying attention to the amount of contact you know kids are getting. A nonprofit football safety group found that more than half of concussions in high school happen on the practice field. That's compared to just 4% in the NFL. And earlier this month, USA Football launched a long-term development program in hopes of attracting more players and making their game even safer. Participation in youth tackle football has dropped in recent years. At the same time, though, flag football numbers are growing. Thank you, Annie. A second kidnapping suspect is now in custody in southern Indiana after it took drones, helicopters, and thermal imaging to find him. Investigators say two men abducted a woman and her child and then tried to kidnap another child in Kentucky. According to police, the two men went into a home with a gun Wednesday and abducted the mother and child. Officers say they then tried to take a nine-year-old girl at another home, but her mother called police. Officers chased the suspects who crossed the border into Indiana and abandoned the vehicle and victims in a corner field. Police immediately arrested one suspect but could not find the other. Then on Thursday, they found the second suspect in a cornfield with the help of aerial technology. A flight attendant charged with public intoxication after passengers on a Chicago to South Bend flight noticed her inebriation has agreed to undergo alcohol abuse counseling. 49-year-old Julianne March of Wisconsin reached an agreement in court that includes alcohol abuse evaluation and counseling during her initial hearing this week. WNDU-TV in South Bend reports that if March meets all of its requirements, the public intoxication charge will be dropped after one year. March was part of an Air Wisconsin crew working a United Express flight. Police arrested her earlier this month when the plane landed in South Bend after departing Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Court documents say she had a blood alcohol content of 0 0.20. Kevin. 547 on this uh, Friday night. Hopefully we've got a three-day weekend coming your way as we go into Labor Day. Victory Field comes alive. First pitch 715 tonight, a little bit later because last night for fireworks after the ball game. If you're in the downtown area and you see some, some of the show, that's where it's coming from. Let me just show you as far as nature's fireworks, there's a lot of lightning around Cincinnati. That's moving away from central Indiana. Rest of central Indiana, what we kind of look for are just these little pop-up showers, maybe a little thunder associated with these just to show you how quickly they pop up and then fade away this is just west of greensburg we were showing this to you uh, our last conversation moving to the east may pop up again as it goes towards batesville and the cincinnati area otherwise just isolated threat the next couple of hours south of interstate 70. take your pick 80 in indy one degree cooler in kokomo down to the south where the frontal boundary has not made its way through yet temperatures are a little warmer a little better chance you have an isolated shower, thunder shower. The winds have already changed to the north northwest in Indianapolis and areas north, signifying then that the spark for the showers and thunderstorms has pushed through those locations. During the day tomorrow, the wind east at 10 miles per hour, 74 at lunchtime, 81 the afternoon high. Chance for thunderstorms 20% through the day. Watch the clock here. You'll see a couple of specks pop up during the heat of the day as we get to oh, anywhere from 4 to about 7 o'clock. There'll be more widespread, a better chance for thunderstorms second half of the weekend on Sunday. High should be 83 this time of year. We settle into the lower 80s tomorrow afternoon. As you go to Sunday, the chance for thunderstorms a little higher. Temperature, that's around 83 or 84, not the warmest in the forecast. That's unveiled in the seven day or four day outlook. The state of Illinois, as well as D.C., are the latest places to investigate e-cig makers. The offices of the attorneys general are looking into whether Juul violated consumer fraud laws by marketing its products to underage teens. Four other state attorneys general are investigating or even suing Juul. The CDC is now working with federal and state investigators to look into respiratory illnesses related to e-cigs. They're gathering information from health officials and clinicians to understand what may be causing people to get 
sick. Now they say in many cases, people recently use e-cigarettes with THC in them. As of today, the CDC has received more than 200 reports of possible cases where an illness is related to e-cig use. Some hospitals have a new tool that helps with prescribing patients safer pain management options. The Care Continues program creates a safety net when patients begin to tackle their own pain management. Patient treatment records are kept electronically, ensuring the patient's entire care team has access to the most up-to-date information, like surgical records or even family history of addiction. The goal is to keep an eye on addiction risks, even after patients are discharged from the hospital. Patients asking for pain medications possibly sooner than they're due for it, you know, would they're at risk to go home and potentially take those pain medications more than prescribed. More than 55,000 patients have been screened with this tool at university hospitals in Ohio. Let's start the Now News feed. Lawmakers want Amazon to make changes so unsafe products aren't sold online. Three senators sent CEO Jeff Bezos a letter. This comes after a report earlier this week said that there are more than 4,000 products being sold on Amazon that are unsafe. The state of Texas is teaming up with a dating app for a new law. The law would ban what they're calling cyber flashing. That's when someone sends you pictures of a sexual nature when you don't want them to. The law goes into effect tomorrow and the violation will be a misdemeanor. And as we get closer to reality of having self-driving cars on the road, companies want lawmakers to put new regulations in place. General Motors and Alphabet, Alphabet, which is Google's parent company, are behind this push. They say the changes will make it easier for the technology to hit the roads in mass. Well, more than half of men these days are doing away with a clean-shaven look. Yep, they're growing out their facial hair. But I found out just how much money it takes to maintain the facial hair. Nice to meet you too. From razors to clippers to shampoo and conditioner, it takes a lot to groom a man's facial hair. Within the last like four years, I feel beards have been really, really popular. Stylist Mallory Pooks has been trimming, cutting, and styling men's hair for nearly a decade. They are getting so into the styling process of hair. I like having facial hair because I don't look 12. That's Travis. He's had facial hair for years. But both Travis and Mallory say the biggest misconception is that having facial hair is low maintenance. Any sort of styling you want, you can achieve with a beard oil. And we also have pomades and you can also use a blow dryer to style it and get it nice and rounded and curled. Beard trim can add an additional $20 to the bill. Plus, the daily upkeep isn't cheap. This beard oil costs about 15 bucks. Beard balms or pomades can also be 10 to 40 dollars. Plus, clippers, well over 20 bucks. Mallory says men like Travis are starting to experience what women have been doing for years. This is kind of like our version of a spa. A lot of men have like really hard work days and stuff and they're doing construction and whatever and they have this moment kind of a get away from everything. Travis says it takes time, effort, and money to keep this look up. You're trying really hard to not look perfect, if that makes any sense. Next in our lineup, mushrooms are the latest trendy ingredient being added to basically everything these days from coffee to workout supplements. But will they actually boost your health? We're getting answers on that.